So over the next few lectures, we are going to add a couple of dynamic effects to our page. So things like making our mobile navigation work and also uh, some scrolling animations, for example. And we will do all of that using JavaScript. And so I think that right now it is a good idea to give you a very, very short and basic introduction to JavaScript, which is, as I mentioned at the beginning of the course, basically the programming language of the web. All right. And as always, we are starting a new section. And so I will copy and then paste that here. So duplicating this folder. And this one, I'm going to call it Omnifoot Optimizations. Because in this section, we will basically do some optimizations before we then launch our page to the internet. So section number nine, and therefore uh, folder number nine here as well. And as always, you of course don't have to create this new folder. So you can simply work on the folder that you have been using. But what you need to do is to get to your starter files. And then here in the starter folder, uh, select this one here and then copy the script. So this file here called script.js, copy that and then paste that uh, into your uh, current project folder. So right here. And actually let's create a folder here, which I'm gonna call JS, which stands for JavaScript. And so all our scripts will go into this folder. So here we already have this starter script because some of the code is already written. All right. And this one is typically called script.js, where JS stands again for the extension of uh, JavaScript. Okay. And so I will take that folder and push it here onto this icon. And let's click on go live. And so it then, uh, here, this should be back to working. Now we can go out of this mode here by clicking again, toggle device bar. And so we are back to normal here. Okay. So we have our HTML, of course, and our JavaScript. And for now, we will not need uh, the CSS files. So let's just close this and now we will work a little bit here in this file. Now actually before doing that we need to connect this script here, so this JavaScript file, with our index.html. So JavaScript can be written in many different places, so we could also write the JavaScript right here in the HTML file, but just like we did with CSS we prefer to do that in another external file and then simply link these together. Now the way we link them is by using the script tag uh, here after these other two scripts. So script, then the defer keyword, and it's not really important what this one does, and then the source is or JavaScript folder, and then script.js in there. All right, so save that, and then here, give it some space and write console.log hello world. Now the rest of the script here might look different in your case. So there might be a little bit more code, but in case that it is, don't worry. That just means that you have the updated version. All right. But anyway, make sure to write this code here and then go back to the browser and now for the first time, we will use this console tab right here. So click that. And indeed, now we get hello world, which is exactly what we wrote in our JavaScript. Great. So that means that our HTML file and the JavaScript file are now connected. Now this console.log here is simply a way that we have of writing content into that browser console that we just saw. So basically this area here. And so that is a very useful way for us to test out some of our code. But now let's write just a little bit more JavaScript. Now, 
My goal here is actually not for you to understand JavaScript. So this is an HTML and CSS course and not a JavaScript course. So this part here of the section can kind of be seen as a bonus. And so here, again, the goal is not really for me to teach you uh, exactly how JavaScript works. So I have a whole big course for that if you're interested in learning JavaScript, but here is not the place for that. So here instead, I will just write some code and we'll walk you through how that code works so that you can then eventually adapt it to your own sites. However, just in order for you to understand even the basics of what I'm gonna write in uh, the next few lectures, here I will just give you a very short introduction to JavaScript. And let's start with variables. So we can define variables using the const keyword and then we give them a name, for example, my name, and then here we define a value for them. So let's say Jonas Schmettmann here. All right, and so basically the variable is my name and we can see a variable like a box that can store some value in it. And so the value here is this text of Jonas Schmettmann, but it could also be a number or some other kind of data. And then we could uh, also lock that data to the console again, just like we did here. So just so we can actually take a look at the variable. So here we defined the variable and then here we can reference that. So we can use it and then it will print Jonas Schmettmann here to our console, right? Now, another thing that we can do and let's again create a variable here. So h1. And so now we can select elements from our HTML page just like we can select them in CSS. So basically using the exact same selectors just as we write them in CSS. So to do that, we write document dot query selector in case we only have one element. And then here we can define a string which is basically some text. So anything that is between these quotes here or double quotes, and then we can just, uh, for the H1 element here, select it using the class selector of heading uh, primary. All right. So just like we did in our CSS. Right, so exactly this selector here. Okay, so that's what we can do uh, right here in uh, JavaScript. And so let's also log that to the console. So just so we see what happens. So you see that now it shows us here this h1 element with the class of heading primary. And then when we hover over it here, you see that it even uh, selects it basically here on the page. So it gets highlighted, right? Okay. However, all of that is not really helpful because we didn't do anything yet that would actually be visible on the page. But let's do that now. So we can take our H1, which remember is this heading element. So with the class of heading primary, and then we can say dot text content and we can then set that for example to my name which will then be replaced here with Jonas Schmettmann right because this my name here is of course a variable which has this value and so let's see and indeed now it got replaced with Jonas Schmettmann and as we hover it now it will of course still select it but now the text content is different. All right. What we can also do is to manipulate the CSS. So for that, we can write h1.style and then, for example, let's say we wanted to change the background color. Now in CSS, background color is written with a hyphen like this, right? However, that is not valid in JavaScript. And so all the property names that have two words 
they use this notation here instead. So without the dash and making then uh, the second word uppercase. Then equal, and then here we can define the value. So again, just like in CSS. And then indeed the background turned red. And you see down here that the way this happened was that JavaScript added this style tag here. So the style attribute and then edit or style in there. So remember from way, way back that one of the ways in which we can write JavaScript is by adding it directly to the elements using the style tag. And so this is what JavaScript does here. Let's try another one, h1.style dot, uh, let's say padding. And let's say five rem, for example. And indeed, that works as well. Okay, nice. However, that is still not really that helpful because we could simply define these styles here also in our CSS, right? So let's actually make it so that these styles only get applied once we actually click here on this heading. All right, so that in itself is also not such a useful effect, but at least it is something that we cannot do with a CSS alone. So that's kind of a dynamic effect already. Now in JavaScript, we can respond to an event like a click by basically listening for that event on a certain element. So in this case, we want something to happen when we click on the H1. And so we can listen for the click event on that H1. So we do that by saying H1 dot add event listener. And now this is something that we call a function. And that's not really important. So this one here is also a function and we can see that because of these parentheses here. So functions are basically reusable pieces of code that we can define somewhere else and then use them. So this add event listener is another case of that. And if all of that sounds confusing, then again, don't worry about that because this is not really uh, about you learning how JavaScript actually works. For that, I have a whole big course, but of course you don't need to take that. But anyway, here we want to listen for the click event. And when that happens, we of course want something to happen. So we want these three lines of code here to execute in that situation. So the way we do that is by here creating a function ourselves. So a function and then giving it a function body. So that's here this block between these curly braces. And then I will grab this code and put it here. Okay. So here we created a function, which again is basically a block of code. And so this block of code will be executed whenever we click on the H1. Okay. So I hope that makes sense. So let's try that out. So I'm going to click now and beautiful. So that worked just nice. Okay. So those were just a couple of toy examples just to show you uh, some of the fundamentals of JavaScript. But now let's actually do something that is helpful. So I'm going to go all the way down here. And here we have uh, the current year, basically, which right now is, of course, not 2027. So I just put that here as a placeholder. But usually on our own web pages, we always want to have the year there and then we want to keep it up to date so that the user basically sees that our website is not like super old. So one way of keeping this year updated is to every year on the January 1st, open up your uh, site code and then change that manually. But the second option is way better because it's automatic. And so that is by simply using JavaScript to do that job for us. So let's do that. And so we basically now want to, again, change the text content of some element. So just like we did here. So that element is here in the footer. Let's go there. So right here. So this year 
this is all we want to change. So we don't want to change the entire text content of the copyright uh, paragraph, but only this one here. Well, then let's create an element just for the year. So span, and then I will give it the class of year. So 2027, and of course it could be any other placeholder, because now we will replace this with JavaScript. So the class is year, and so therefore, in order to now select this, we do just like before. So let's say year, and then I like to call these actual HTML elements uh, EL. So adding that value there. So that's again document dot query selector and then again uh, the quotes and then we can just write the very normal selector. Okay and now we can of course change the text content of this element. So year l dot text content let's say 3000 just for now just so we see that we successfully uh, selected our element. And yeah, so now it's 3000, but that is still not ideal, obviously. But now the power of JavaScript comes into play because here we can very simply get the current year. So let's do that also here, creating a new variable for a new uh, value. So let's call that current year. And so here is the trick of getting the current year. So we say new date, then we open and close parentheses, which means that this is a function. And so all of this here will basically uh, generate the current date. All right, so this is the current date. And then on that, we can say get full year and then again, open and close parentheses. So don't forget these. Okay. Then we can also lock this to the console. But, well, we can also just put it directly here. All right. And indeed, it is right now 2021 by the time I'm recording this video. And so, Therefore, here we got 2021, and the same thing down here also in the console. Nice. So, just in our very first lecture on JavaScript, we already did something helpful. So this is very useful. So a nice trick, even if you don't learn anything else about JavaScript, just make sure to include, well, these three lines of code here in some JavaScript. All right. Now this one here we do not need, so we can comment all that out, uh, just like in the other files, by simply hitting command or control slash. And so then it's all gone, and while well, this code here doesn't do any harm, so we can just leave it like this. All right, and that's actually it for this very, very short uh, crash course, let's say, into JavaScript. But I hope you still had some fun here, and that maybe you find JavaScript a little bit more interesting now.